tonight. The moment, you guys been waiting for this moment? <laughs> Bethany Hamilton and Lacey Strum from Flyleaf. I just got goosebumps. Well, uh, this is um, Bethany Hamilton. You guys may know her from uh, her movie Soul Surfer. And we have Lacey Strum from uh, the band Flyleaf. Okay, well, let's, let's get this thing going. Um, Hello? Oh. <laughs> I wasn't sure if my mic worked. Okay, cool. Uh, well, just give me, um, give me a, a little uh, background on you. Uh, wh where were you guys born? Where were you born? Um, I was born in Kauai, Hawaii, um, and that's where I grew up um, and learned how to surf. And um, yeah, just kind of lived my life there ever since, and um, it's been amazing. So you travel the world surfing for a living, get paid, so that's amazing. I, I surf too, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a summer surfer. I told you I hate cold water, but <laughs> I skateboard every day. But um, tell us about some of your cool trips, like how, what's been a cool thing that God's done on some of your trips, some of your highlights. Yeah, I guess um, my life's been pretty incredible. Like, after losing my arm to the shark um, at age 13, I continued surfing and um, uh, just continued to de devote my life to Jesus Christ. And um, I've, just, <laughs> I've, um, I've just been able to travel and, and compete as a professional surfer around the world and um, see so many amazing places and um, go on surf trips to remote places all over the place, and it's just been incredible um, just seeing all the different cultures in this world, and um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm very thankful for my life, and um, it's just cool how God can take things in our lives and turn them around for good, and you know, we all go through something rough, and it's not always easy, and He doesn't say it's going to be easy, it's like life's about, you know, challenges, and you know, it kind of will just bring us to a place where we just have to give it up to him. Awesome. If there's people outside and they want to come in, we're down to put people on the floor and all around the wall. So if you guys are outside, go ahead and come in right now. Let's pack this place. Um, Lacey, I, I, I met Lacey about three years ago right when I first got saved. And we just we became really good friends. And it just... I, they, they've had a lot of influence on my life, you and your husband, when I got to go stay out, stay out there in uh, Texas with you guys. But So you've sold millions of records. You've traveled the world for a living. Oh, wait. Before we even get into that, where were you born? Oh. Well, I was born in Homestead, Florida, but I didn't really ever live there. I moved to Texas pretty soon after that and lived back and forth between there and Mississippi. And now I live in Pittsburgh with my husband and his, his extended family. So. And you have a kid, Jack. Yes. Just had a baby. Congratulations. He, thank you. He's awesome. So, um, tell, tell us, that you, so you've, you got crazy stories, too, because you, you actually meet up with a lot of broken people that, yeah. that are touched. I've talked to a girl that wanted to commit suicide, and she heard that it was when the, that song, Flyleaf, that Flyleaf song came out, um, um, Fully Live, mm -hmm. and she was playing it, and, and she ended up searching God and giving her life to God and now she's like she was the president of the Christian club she fully turned her whole life around from a song wow so Thank I you mean God. you've heard many stories tell us about some of those crazy stories of people yeah. that have come, met you well fully alive um, we've heard that story a lot about that song in particular um, I remember being in Germany and I didn't even think they even knew who Flyleaf was in Germany we were touring with Stone Sour and um, that night Corey Taylor lost his voice. It was his first time ever losing his voice. Like, in all of Slipknot, all of Stone Sour, everything. And he was really upset about it. But the fans were so awesome. They stood outside the gates and sang all the Stone Sour songs at the top of their lungs at, by the buses. And we all went out and signed for them and just talked to them for a little while. And I got a letter from... Uh, from someone who had passed it, and nobody even knew who it was that, that gave the letter because it had passed through so many people to get to us. And um, it had my name on it, and he, he said, you know, my, my uh, I, I never knew who Flyleaf was. I heard your song on the radio, which I don't even know how they were playing it there because 
we didn't have any distribution or anything over there. It was one of the first times we ever were in Berlin or Germany. And, uh, and they, he said, I heard your song on the radio, and it's something about it caught my attention. And I, I, thought, I thought, who is this? I'm going to go look them up. And he said he went online and looked it up, and he heard my testimony that I grew up in a um, family uh, struggle financially. My mom was a single mom with six kids, and um, we had a lot of challenges just with that by itself, and then everything else life does, you know, <laughs> craziness. And uh, that I became an atheist at 10 when my cousin was beaten to death by a stepfather, and I just couldn't believe that God was good or that he was real or that he was loving if he was going to let that happen. And at 10 years old, I became an atheist and became depressed and uh, got into, you know, drugs and um, promiscuity. And, you know, I was dating a girl at the time whenever I became Christian. And the thing was that I, ha- when I ended up having the most crazy um, just circumstance after circumstance that led me to a, uh, a f- just realizing I don't want to wake up anymore. And I, and I had those feelings before, and I contemplated suicide a lot. But uh, but the f- the final thing, and I don't even know what hit it, what triggered it, but it was a whole bunch of things at once. And I had a habit of meditating on all the bad things in my life, just feeling sorry for myself a lot, and um, wrote down a lot of bad things and just read them over and over and wrote really sad music and poems and stuff like that. And uh, and I think. Uh, by that time, when I was 16, no matter how many drugs I did, no matter how many relationships I had, friendships, you know, whatever it was, it never, it never helped heal anything in my heart, nothing. So uh, it just felt like it would heal for a minute, and it would be good for a little while, and then something else would happen, and it would be like, it just never lasted. So I remember, uh, I remember, um, deciding to commit suicide one you know night I just said I'm gonna do it tomorrow and the next day I, I went about my plan and um uh, and ended up uh coming home from school and my grandma saw me and she said um she still wasn't supposed to be home and she's like what are you doing here and I was like uh, um I was like just leave me alone. Let me smoke. I'm just going to go smoke a cigarette because I was mad she was there. And she let me smoke in the backyard. And she was like, no, you're not smoking anymore. And I was so upset. I was like, everything in my life is falling apart. And I was just screaming at her about how terrible 